All right then, my friends. So in this video, what I'd like to do is manipulate the UI, in particular, the links in this navbar dependent on the user status. If they're logged in, then I want to show them the account, log out and create guide. And if they're logged out, I just want to show them log in and sign up. OK, at the minute we're showing everything. So if we look inside the index.html and scroll up to the nav, all of these links here, they're showing by default, right? So what we need to do, first of all, is hide them all to begin with, right? And then if a user is logged in, then we're only going to show the links with this class logged in, which is the top three over here. If they're logged out, we're going to hide these and we're only going to show these things, the logged out links. So what we need to do, first of all, is create a function which is going to control this hiding and showing of links. And I'm going to call this function setup UI. OK, and this setup UI function that is going to take in the current user and it's going to check if that user exists. If it does, it's going to show these links and hide the others. If it doesn't, it's going to show these links and hide the others. OK, so let us go to the index file. First of all, I'm first of all going to get a reference to all of the logged out links and all of the logged in links. So all of the logged out ones are these things with a class of logged out. All of the logged in ones are these things. So let us do that first of all. I'm going to say const and then logged out links and set that equal to documents dot query selector. And then it's all because we're selecting more than one element here. So inside here, we want to get everything with a class of logged hyphen out because these are the logged out links, the things that we see when we're logged out. Now we need to do the same thing for the uh, for the logged in. So const logged in links and that's going to be equal to documents dot query select all selector all and these are the logged in links okay so now we have uh, a collection of logged out links and a collection of logged in links now let's create this function called setup ui so const setup ui and we're going to be calling this from our auth function over here around about here but we'll do that in a second so anyway, this is going to take in the user as a parameter. So inside, what we'd like to do is check if this user exists. If it does exist, it means they're logged in, right? And we want to show these links. If it doesn't exist, then it means they're logged out. And we want to hide those links and show these ones. So we'll do a check if user. So if they're logged in. So let's do a comment. Toggle UI elements and underneath what we'll say is logged in links and we want to use a for each method on these because this is a collection of links not just one so we need to cycle through them and we'll refer to each individual link as an item you can call it whatever you want and it's going to fire a function for each item and each time what I'd like to do is get the item and set the style display property equal to block so let's set that equal to block like so. So we're cycling through all of the logged in links and we're showing them. We're setting the display to block. Now, what we'd like to do is take the logged out links and do the same thing. Use a for each method to cycle through them, take each item. And this time we want to hide them. So we say item dot style dot display is going to be equal to none this time. So we're hiding the logged out links. OK. All right. then. So let's do an else statement. And inside here again, toggle UI elements, can I spell? No, UI elements, like so. And I'm just going to copy this, but this time around, because we're not logged in right here, then we need to do it the opposite. So this has to be none, all of the logged in links, and this has to be block, okay? So when we call this method setup UI, if we're logged in, then we're only going to show the logged in links and we're going to hide the logged out links. If we're not logged in and this is null, then the else statement will run. We're going to hide the logged in links and we're going to show the logged out links. OK, so let's save that and let's call this method, this function from the auth.js. So let's call it right here. We'll say setup UI and pass in the user right here. OK, now we also need to call it down here because this is an if check. If the user exists, we're going to call it with the user. If the user doesn't exist, if they've logged out, we'll still call it setup UI, 
but this time we don't pass in anything. And if we don't pass in anything, this is going to evaluate to false. It will be null. Okay. So then this will fire because they're not logged in. Let me change that to item. Okay. So now we're calling this in two places and it should work so that when we're logged in, it shows the links that we need to see. And when we're logged out, it shows the links that we need to see right there. So let's save all this preview in a browser. Um, I can see an error, but let me just refresh and see if the error persists. Okay. So this says item is not defined and this is in index.js. So let's have a look inside there. We've obviously made a typo somewhere along the line. It's this. Okay. Item T. Cool. So save that. And now view it. So if we look inside the header now, we're logged in. So we see the guides and we also only see these three links. Now, if we log out, that should change. Now we just see log in and sign up. Same again. If I log in, I'll say Mario at the net ninja.co.uk and test one, two, three, four, log in. Then we should see these links again. So that's working. Now there's one caveat here. If I refresh, pay special attention to the nav and watch all of the links be there for a split second before they go back to these three. So refresh, you see them all quickly. Now I don't want that. I don't want them to see them all to begin with. So what we can do is we can set them all to be hidden by default, display not. And by the way, the reason this happens when we refresh and we see them all for a split second, the reason that happens is because we're hard coding the HTML to begin with and we're loading all of these links into the DOM. Now, it's taking just a split second for Firebase Auth to work out that we're actually logged in and only then do we update the links. OK, so by default, what I'm suggesting is that we hide them all to begin with. And then when it realizes that we're logged in, it runs the setup UI function and it shows the links that we need to see. So let's get all of these LI tags. I'm going to alt select several different ones of them so I can type it all at the same time. And what I'm going to do is apply a style attribute to each of these and the display is going to be none to begin with. So by default, when we first load the page, everything is hidden. OK, and it's only after Firebase Auth kicks in, figures out that we're either logged in or logged out, runs that setup UI function. That's when the links will first appear. So did I save that? Yep. Well, let's refresh this page. Hopefully now we don't see that flicker at the top. We see nothing and then we see the links. Awesome. So that is a much better user experience. So there we go, my friends. That's how we can update the UI dependent on the login status once again. In the next video, what I'm going to do is show you how we can actually create guides using this form right here.